This dude looking shape, man. Yeah. Hey, we ready? I need to be. It's gonna be we one, ready? Of those, one of those fights, you know. Um, DP, what's up, baby? What's happening, man? Good, good to see you again. With me again. Yeah, man. Yeah, you look good. You look good. I mean, everybody in here, like, you can touch it. I mean, can I? Let me touch it. Oh my God! Wow, yeah. you look like you belong on Magic Mike because you all dark too. <laughs> You all dark too. Oh man. How you feeling, bro? We, I feel good, man. I feel a few great. days away. Excited. BMF championship. Justin Gaethje number two. How are you feeling and how was the preparation as you got ready for this rematch? I feel great. Preparation was great, my team was great, but um, I approached it like a different fight. Really? Yeah. I didn't approach it like a rematch. Did you watch the first fight? Because everybody keeps going. These guys fought before. I'm like, it was so long ago, yeah. but you can't erase that it actually happened. It happened. Yeah. Did you watch it? We watched it the first week I got into camp, just to, because my boxing coach wanted to watch it. And then uh, whenever the countdown show was in, they made me watch it again, but that's the only times. I never went back and watched it at night. I watched his Fazeev fight a lot, you know? But. Yeah. Why? Why that fight? Why didn't you watch it Because it's again? a different fight. We're both completely different fighters. But we both still have that it's dog fight potential. Yeah. Uh, any round, but I think we're both much more mature, methodical, technical, but we'll see. How much more confidence, because this is kind of like what I've been saying. I feel like for as much as you guys have elevated your skill set, your confidence, because you had those moments wearing UFC championships, is probably what's the most glaring growth in regards to you two. Like how much more confident do you feel today as an athlete opposed to back then in 2018? I mean, I've proven myself time and time again since that fight. So, of course, I'm confident. I'm, I trust my abilities. But uh, I, he, he does as well, I'm sure. Yeah. DP, Justin Gaethje did a great job in the physique fight with the jab. That is what fought him. That got him back into the fight. But because you're a southpaw, that's a less effective weapon. And because he was trying to throw the kicks, and you, that's when you counted him with the straight left. Yeah. What have you done to try to make sure that you don't have to take that level of damage to the legs before you get him with something? Like, what have you changed in your preparation? I have invested in my, def my defense. You know, me and Tiago Alves, day after day, week after week for the last two months have been checking kicks, countering kicks, working takedowns off of kicks, just, you know, working on ways to, to avoid that. Yeah, it's been a while since you fought, right? No Michael November. Yeah, Michael Chandler kept taking you down. When he kept taking you down, and then you ultimately submitted him, he showed your black belt, right? He showed that you, you, know, you have that black belt. When you were able to start to control it on the ground, like when you think about that fighting a guy like Chandler who has that all-American background, he didn't really want to stand with you. Do you anticipate Gaethje maybe going, I need to wrestle this dude a little bit because it's so dangerous when they're trying to strike with you? Uh, I'm not sure. I think Gaethje's a little bit better striker than Chandler. Not as explosive, but... Mm -hmm. Probably just as much, if not more, power, uh, willing to take risks, just like Chandler was. But I mean, Gaethje fought a striker his last fight, and he wasn't diving for his ankles. You know, he, no, he, he, he shot. He shot a few times, bad shots. Might, might I add? <laughs> but he got him down in the fifth round or the third round. You know, <laughs> some bad shots, DP. There was no. What happened? You don't wrestle enough. I don't know. You don't wrestle enough, so now you don't forgot. How to I wrestle. don't know. I don't know. But there was some bad shots. But he finished one in the third round. Yeah. And uh, we'll see if he does do that. You know, I think my defense will hold up, my, my wrestling will hold up, and if it doesn't, he's got to deal with my jiu-jitsu. You know, the BMF championship, and I kind of asked Justin about this, the BMF championship, I know Masvidal is one of your friends, and Nate Diaz, but these are guys that have double-digit losses over the course of their careers. You and, you and Justin Gaethje are championship-caliber fighters. I don't know if you guys have 10 fights lost combined, but because you're championship-level fighters, do you feel like it's elevated that championship? Like now it's not some Islam. Islam said it was a fight. It was a title for the bums. It's not now, right? Because you guys aren't bums. You're championship level fighters. Do you feel like that belt's elevated now so it means more this Saturday? Uh, I'm not putting a whole lot. Of, it's, it's cool and it's a cool part of, of my legacy, you know, winning this belt. Um, that'll be something fun to talk about, but I'm not trying to legitimize it or it is what it is yeah you know just to have your name to, in the hat to be considered for a fight like a bmf fight you know you've put it on and bled and done some crazy stuff throughout the years 
to, to put yourself in that position. So I think that's more, winning the belt is obviously the, the big prize, but I think being in the fight, the second ever BMF fight, is like a, that's a prize in itself because yeah. people respect, you know, the fans want to see us fight, and that's why this fight is what it is. And this fight means something now. Yeah. Because whoever wins this will be next for Islam versus Oliveira winner, you would imagine, right? The UFC hasn't told me, but I, I would, I mean, we're number two and three. Number one's fighting for the belt. We're both coming off of wins. Our course came back around full circle, and we're going to do it. Today's video sponsors the Game Time app. The Game Time app is the leader in last-minute ticket purchases from basketball games to football, UFC comedy shows, and concerts. You can get tickets cheaper by using the Game Time app. It does not matter where you are, where you live. Use the Game Time app to get out there and do something fun. And here's a little bit of a cherry on top. Use the promo code DCTV for $20 off of your first purchase. Once again, download the Game Time app right now. Get out and have some fun and use the code DCTV for $20 off of your first purchase. I want to have fun, and I use the Game Time app for all of it. Hell, maybe I'll see y'all in Salt Lake City. Last-minute ticket purchases are made easier with the Game Time app. Like you said, you haven't fought since last November. When this, before Oliveira got announced, were you thinking yeah, in I, your mind that I can turn around? There's no way. No, no, I wasn't. Hurt. I wasn't going to say yes. I was thinking they would ask. Oh, you thought they would ask? Yeah, yeah. But you were going to say. Well, I got. You guys are going to get beat up in this fight. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Every single fight's like that. Right, right, right. So it's almost like I, when people were saying stuff like it's going to be the win, I'm like, there's no way these two get out of this train wreck right. without being injured. I was thinking the same thing what you were thinking, but I <laughs> thought they might ask. We'll see. You yeah. know, that's what I was thinking like at the beginning of camp when, when it started happening, but it's all good. And, man, Charles, that wasn't, that wasn't the best Charles in that first Islam fight. You know, if, if, if Charles shows up who he was when he fought me, when he fought Gaethje, when he fought yeah. Chandler, when he fought Dariush, if that guy shows up, I mean, he it's can. It's a tougher fight. It's a much tougher He didn't want to be in there that last one. What he said that he wasn't there in the last fight. He said he wasn't like physically there. What do you, why do you say he didn't feel like he wanted to be in there? Because it looked like he wanted out. Like he didn't, it just didn't look like the same that same guy. fire. Like that burn in his eye, right? Even when you guys were knocking him down, you could see that he still had the fight yeah. in him. One thing you don't question is your fight. What allows you to kind of take the risk and be in those types of fights and never seem to falter? Because you guys both have little deals, right? Gaethje kind of fixes his gloves when he's, like, ready to fight. And you do shit like, okay, come on. Mm -hmm. You almost acknowledge, like, all right, let's go. I'm pointing at Connor, like, let's do this. But you do this every time. When somebody gets you with a shot or when you land something, you're like, all right, I got you. Right? Like, <laughs> what, what is that in you that, that makes you kind of fight in that way? I think it's just those kind of things are habits uh, from so many reps in the gyms. Like, if I'm sparring, if somebody lands a good shot on me, good shot. Like, just to, to not get... Uh, overwhelmed with emotion or get back you know I don't want to immediately try to get him back and put yeah. myself in harm's way which is easier said than done but that kind of keeps me mentally locked in like it keeps me flowing smooth not like blinding myself with anger or something you know like if you hit me with a good shot and I'm like I gotta get you back I'm, I might get hurt but if you hit me with a good shot I acknowledge it reset okay it's just like reset you know that's yeah. what I'm doing when I'm you know when you say good shot for a lot of stuff like you know like good shot like good shot that's a good not shot. necessarily a basketball shot you know people don't understand that yeah. You know when I was they at probably, Russell, they don't. They, I used to say that whenever they'd be Russell, I'd be like, good shot, Jamil, nice hand fight. And they're like, but I didn't shoot. <laughs> People don't understand that. They don't get like that. It's kind of like a Lafayette thing. I it guess. might be. It might be. Because I say it all the time. And I'm like, well. Good, good shot. shot man. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it just makes sense. You get this championship belt on Saturday in Utah. You've been here since last Friday. Have you really taken much time to really think about the altitude or anything? I slept in a altitude tent last two weeks of training camp in South Florida. I slept at 5,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Then I came out here, I'm about a little bit over a thousand feet above Salt Lake City. I'm in the mountains here at the Airbnb. Okay. So I, I did a, you know, a little bit extra. A little acclimation, not Look, too if, much. Look, if I'm tired, he's exhausted. I don't care where he trains. If he trains at 8,000 feet, it doesn't, if I'm tired, he's exhausted. Cause you're putting the pressure. Cause I don't get tired. You don't get tired? No. Like Kevin Gates? Five rounds. Five rounds. You ready for it? Let's go. Bro, it's been, it's been so long already. You said your first main event was in 2011. First UFC main event in 2012. 2012. You made your debut back in 11. 34 years old now. Still looking down the line like, man, I got a long time of doing this. Please don't tell me anything about like stopping. Still this. looking damn good as well. You forgot you that. You look good. Thank you. you uh, look good. This is my 47th mixed martial arts fight. It's crazy. 
and I still feel good. I still know I can compete with the best in the world. It's just how much do I want to do it, you know? Yeah. My family's good. I've said this all week. My family's good. I'm not fighting. I'm fighting for a lot of different things. Of course, I, w I want the money and, and I want the title and the big fights. What's left on the list is undisputed world champion that hasn't been crossed off. That's still the goal. That's still what I want to do. Yeah. And as long as I feel good and feel able, I mean, we'll see, man. Saturday first. And then, Saturday first. Yeah. All right, before I let you go, champ, bro, there's a restaurant in Salt Lake City. One of us lives here. There's gumbo with rue in the restaurants. I don't know what time you leave Sunday, but if you're going to be here at least till lunch, let me buy you lunch. I'm going to go. I'm, 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 leaving, I'm, I'm here. I'm leaving Monday. Okay, so I'm going to go and leave a tab. I'm going to say this for Dustin Poirier, and I'm going to buy you some gumbo. I'm in. I'll bring my own sauce. <laughs> my own hot sauce. I know you got that I got hot it. sauce. I got it. You carry them over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got both of them, the hot I got all three of them here. <laughs> <laughs> and some rare stash. I mean, if we doing it, I got twelve but, <laughs> bottles in there of rare stash. You want some? I mean, you want to talk about a man that knows how to peddle his products? <laughs> Dustin Poirier is a business man, not just a businessman. This weekend, Dustin Poirier takes on Justin Gaethje for the BMF Championship at UFC 291. Make sure you guys buy that pay per view. It's going to be fantastic. One of the best cards we've had for a long time. And when you put these two in the main event you know it's going to be absolute fireworks. And tap into everything Dustin's doing. He got the hot sauce. He got the rare stash. Dustin Poirier on Instagram and everywhere else. Uh, Dustin the Diamond Poirier uh, everywhere else on his social media. Make sure you guys check him out. Till next time, guys, like, subscribe. Peace.